Good afternoon. We're going to look at the video that recently Brian Denver put out and uh, we're dealing with this individual named Sheffy, Saint of the Wilderness. And he starts off here, the true all time gospel in the movie Sheffy. And uh, I think he's done some videos on this before. Now, of course, he puts me and Robert Blaker and Max puts heads on us there, like we're attacking these guys uh, because of the city he's saying, Romans 10 13. We'll deal with that in a minute. So he's got this old man that is a witness to this other guy, Sheffy. Sheffy is the young guy here. It's okay, so. Preacher, what you said about searching, I'm the one you were talking about. Preacher, is it as easy as you say it is? It is. It's very easy. <laughs> it's faith alone. Very easy. Nothing easier. Say, you sound educated. Can you read? Yes. Then read this. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What's your name, son? Read Romans ten fourteen. How can they call upon him on him upon him whom they not believe? Why won't they read ten read Romans ten fourteen? Why won't they read Romans ten fourteen? Romans 10, 13 isn't for a lost person to get eternal salvation. It's for a saved person to pray to get out of help and need. That's the spiritual application. Doctrine is to the Jew. That's why you find Romans 10, 13 in Acts chapter 2 when Peter's talking to the Jews. You don't find it anywhere else, people. Nor do you find confession anywhere in Romans 10, 9, 10. But these people are going to put you under an issue of praying, calling, confession. Which is, was not for the uh, Gentile. It was mentioned one time, Romans 10, and they want to bring it to Romans 10 so you can make sure you lose your salvation. Never get your salvation, I put it. Robert? Robert Sheffy, sir. Well, Robert Sheffy, do you believe this book? Yes. Then all you have to do is ask God's forgiveness and be saved. Ask God's forgiveness and be saved. Is that the gospel, people? Then he puts up a thing where he's got me and Max Bauer and uh, uh, Robert Baker, you know, attacking, throwing things at him or something. I think he's, you know, he's got the, the film, into, you know, reversed because this guy shows up with a cut in his head and then he's got him there and then he's got the incident where he was getting, you know, thrown things were thrown at him uh, later on. So he's got the Got the time issue reversed. Suppose like we, you know, we pop up at Romans ten thirteen and we start throwing things at the guy. So uh, let me see. Let me start about one forty six here. I'm on my glasses. The commotion seems to be about over, friends. Just be seated and we'll finish the service. Now look here, look at this Bible. God's offering us a free gift. And all we have to do is ask him for it. A free gift if you ask for? What does it say if they ask? No, what you have to do is believe. You don't ask for a free gift. God, Christ, Christ never said ask. He said, take it. Take the gift. It's a free gift. You don't have to ask. That's why God put the word free in there. You don't have to ask. It's there. Take it. How do you take it? How do you appropriate it? Brian, Brian thinks appropriation by faith is stealing it. If you don't ask, you've stolen it. When God says, uh, come freely. Come freely and take of the gift of salvation. I'm going to ask God to give courage to anyone who feels God's Holy Spirit urging him to come forward and see from the Bible how to be saved. Uh, the service is over. for He doesn't ask for salvation. Good night, folks. Thank you and good night. Okay. Beware of false teachers who say these things. Don't repent of sin. Only believe. Prayer is a work. 
Yes, it's part of your salvation, but you, it's a work after. Even if you get saved after, it's a work, but it's a good work if you're doing it for the Holy Spirit. Don't ask God to save you. Beware of these false teachers who say these things. Now, in this thing here, the short little clip they had here, he doesn't have him believe. He says, only ask, and God will, will, will save you. So now let's listen to the testimony of the man who played the moonshiner in the Sheffield movie. So let me see about Sheffy. Sheffy's a Methodist. Methodists don't believe in eternal security. This is uh, from Sainted Wilderness. I ordered the book. And uh, the biography of Robert says Sheffield reads the story of a unique and a true meaning of the word man. The details of his life entitled him to the myth mythical position he holds even today among the people of the part of the South where so many years ago he traveled the circuits of Virginia, West Virginia, and the fringes of other states as an itinerant a preacher. Born in 1820, raised in Virginia, having spent part of his early youth in the home of a wealthy Presbyterian uncle and aunt, there was little in his early background to explain Robert Sheffley's call to the Methodist ministry. Okay. But in Dengler is, is appealing to a Methodist for his salvation. They don't believe in eternal security. His unusual conversion, his unusual conversion, well, that's supposed to be typical. Brian is telling you something there that's supposed to be typical. So they say it's unusual. And against all odds, the eventual acceptance of his unorthodoxy by the hierarchy of his adopted church, and ultimately the adoration of an army of followers who came to believe him to be a divine, capital D. What? <laughs> Here are, the documented, here are documented his extraordinary gift, gifts of exaltation, the depths of his caring about every single soul in the widespread territory road on a brutally rigorous, self-imposed schedule, as well as the unexplainable explainable psychic and prophetic talents that truly earned him the saint of the wilderness. So according to this thing, he had psychic and prophetic talents. That's what Brian wants you to believe he has. That's what Brian wants you, wants you to believe he has. And uh, you don't get saved by asking God for forgiveness. You get saved by believing in the gospel. That's how you get saved. So I'll get the book, we'll look at it, and uh, and uh, look at the movie. And get more details and see how this thing is. We see. Uh, Mr. Gar Mr. Carver's book tells us in detail of, his physically, uh, of, his phys of this physically frail, uh, yet incredibly strong man whose life spanned 82 years, not like John Wesley, and the demons with which he had to wrestle, his personal uh, deprivations and sorrows and triumphs, the beauty of his love and all four living things, and the unshakability of his faith and prayer petitions. petitions. The Saint of Willis is an authentic, thoroughly researched life of a figure still revered, uh, still talked about throughout the South and not rarely in other parts of the world. But such a life example knows no bounds. Such love and faith is universal and its appeal to the whole of mankind. So we'll look at that and uh, see exactly uh, where his psychic and prophetic powers were and where they came from. Now, a lot of things that the Methodist preachers had left to commend, commend for. They're commendable, circuit preachers. But none of them got saved by, by asking God for forgiveness. None of them. It's not the gospel. They got saved by believing the gospel. That's how you get saved. And Brian can interpose, interpose and put you know funny little things up. And Romans 10, 13, and repent of your sins. That's worship salvation. That's his whole thing. Remember he says that? I'm not a worship salvationist. Repent of your sins put you on, is, put you in a worship salvation camp. Why? Because you're making an issue about how you're going to live afterward. That's the big fundamental issue here. Is the issue about how you get, what you're going to do about where you're going to spend eternity, or is the issue about well, I want to change my life. I don't want you know I want to get away from sin. I'm willing to turn from sin. You get convicted for sin as a sinner, but it's unbelievable. You can't do anything about your sin. What you, they admit that what what practical thing is? Oh, I'm repenting of my sins, then you go and sin. Like you stop sinning? You know, they admit that. You're going to stop sinning. Well, are you, you want or you won't. God puts the willingness in you after you get saved. God puts a new nature in you 
where you want to stop sinning and the Holy Spirit's working on you to grow. But that comes after you're saved. So you're not required to have repentance of sins. It's meaningless. What you're doing is repenting of your unbelief. You're changing your mind about your unbelief. So when you believe, and that's why we preach faith, and not repentance, repentance is built into the faith. You've, you've turned your change in mind, and you've rejected all your dead works, anything you thought could save you, you rejected them. And now you believe in the true gospel. And that's what you're counting on for salvation. Not your own works. Not your religion. Anything else, you know, anything you can do, you reject it. You say, I can't do it. And you freely take, freely take a, a water of salvation. Freely. You say, ask. God tells you, come and take the water freely. He says, come freely, come freely, come. Uh, this is a free gift. Take, take the water of salvation. You just say, ask. It's there. It's there to take it. How do you take it? How do you appropriate it by faith? They want you to ask. Oh, please, Lord. Oh, he did the work away. He gave it. the gifts there. All you have to do is take it, appropriate it by faith. So I'm going to look at more about Sheffy. Sheffy, but the point is, is that that old man who gave that gospel, there's no gospel there. No gospel there. All you have to do is ask God to forgive you and you'll be saved. No, you won't. Oh, no, you won't. You can ask God <laughs> not doomsday to forgive you. You will not be saved. The gospel is you have to believe. Faith alone means without works. Not without grace. You see, the worship people, when I'm put, say, well, the faith alone people are saying, you know. And that's, that. we'll talk about the issue of justification of the old when they had the five solas up, the uh, uh, reformers, they actually didn't believe it. Believe them. Sola Scriptura. They didn't go by Sola Scriptura. They went by tradition. So when you had the faith alone, their faith alone really isn't faith alone. They've added works into it. The true faith alone means faith alone. Without any additional works. But they were so afraid that, oh, if you have the faith, you have the faith it can't be alone because you have to produce works. Because they were terrified of being antinomian by Roman Catholics. So you guys are preaching... Uh, that a person once they get saved, they can just go and do what they want to do. This is what the Lordship of Salvation is claiming we are teaching. And of course, back in those days, a combination of state and church, that'd be tantamount to anarchy. You know, I mean, basically, uh, they took over care of the idea of morality was part of the state function. But this really came to the forefront through the Puritans. And you can see right all over Brian Denver, a Puritan mindset where you'd have an idea where you're going to burn people at the stake. <laughs> if you don't disagree, you know, witches, witches. You know, we're going to burn you. But uh, we'll stop here. Put this up. Yeah, you again, know, more lies from Brian Denham. going to give you a false gospel. Determined to teach a false gospel. A false gospel, by the way, that's pre pre uh, uh, prevalent throughout most denominations. But here he's putting a Shepley and he's putting up a, a Methodist as the epitome of, 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 of the gospel. Uh, a guy who doesn't believe in eternal security. A Methodist didn't. Methodist does not believe in eternal security. And uh, supposedly so it's about some psychic and prophetic powers. So I'll stop here and I'll put this up. Amen. Thank you.